Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. Hello and welcome to today's Battle Mech Review. Today we're going to be looking at the Deva. And uh, I'm recording early because the dropship blew a gasket on my way to the next jump ship. So it has to be repaired. We're stuck here for probably a day, a day and a half while they're fixing things. Just gives me enough time to uh, polish off one of these. The Deva, the Deva, Deva, Deva. I think it's supposed to be said Deva is a, a pretty decent Omnimech in its range. There's some configuration that I already just look at them and know how to improve on. But as an Omnimech, it has a, a lot of potential. And it was one of the Word of Blake top-of-the-line machines, to be quite honest. Uh, one that saw a little bit more action than some of the others, at least from what my records have told me. So let's get into it. Since I got time, and uh, we didn't do the whole history part on the last video, we're going to do a little bit more this time around because of something someone brought up uh, while I was recording these uh, on the way. A few people do show up, and a few people ask, how did Comstar collapse? They ran the banks, the Mercs board, the communication. They were pretty much Space Vatican for a while. They were used. One thing you need to look at is that Comstar was always set up to fail, and people don't like me saying that, I know, but Jerome Blake was a pretty smart guy, his beta idea was pretty good, but Conrad Toyama kinda took it too far when he took the reins from the operation. Things kept tumbling from that point onwards, and the real big problems started with when Mindo Waterly when she was directly supporting the Draconis Combine over every other party in the lead-up and the actual Fort Succession War. Comstar has always uh, tried to look as neutral as possible, and that was pretty much what they were up until that point, at least in my opinion and looking at historical facts. Comstar was causing trouble to everyone, murdering scientists left and right, but they weren't taking any sides. It's really in that particular era here, right in the 3020s, early 3030s, that we see this uh, shift in Comstar to support anyone that was not named Davion, basically. After her asc er, ascension to Primus, well, Mindo Waterly was responsible of Comstar during Operation Revival, the clan invasion, and she saw the clan as a fantastic opportunity to crush the evil inner sphere so that the word of Blake, peace be upon him, become law later on. You can look up Operation Scorpion if you want to see all the details as to uh, what she was planning and wanting to do. And uh, you can quickly notice that it was not a very good idea. And it kind of ruined Comstar's reputation even more. And that included with people that uh, Comstar used to be pretty good friends with in the Draconis Combine. Yes, Comstar also had that big win at Tukayid, uh, but that basically put the cards down on the table showing that uh, Comstar were a bunch of duplicitous bastards that had a larger military than they ever should have had. So a whole lot of things coming up at the same time that made Comstar look even worse to the general public. When you can't trust the banks or the telecommunication companies, things tend to go bad. When your religion is exposed as a fraudulent cult that is trying to topple governments, things have a tendency to go bad. Uh, when you get called out and uh, some of your leadership decides, okay, no, we're going to go more secular and we're going to try to temper things, and a portion of your population in your organization goes, nope, we're going to start arming more people and start doing casual war crimes, it's another way things can get pretty bad. The whole jihad thing was really not a good look for Comstar, and that was on both sides of that fence. The Kong Guard got destroyed while trying to retake Terra, leaving the secular Comstar basically a completely toothless organization. On the other hand, you had presenter Apollyon in St. James that was an embargoing planet, locating all worlds and nuking everything that they could. But uh, they aided the clans, and compared to sheer amount of death, the clans committed and the clans did. And compare it to what the Blakist did during the Jihad, and uh, 
keep telling me that the clans are a bigger problem than whatever Comstar was doing. And yes, here I am blaming Comstar in general, not just the Word of Blake portion of it, because this whole mess probably could have been avoided if Comstar had been a little bit more honest from the get-go and maybe had not done as many uh, casual murder of engineers and scientists and researchers during the first, second, and third succession war. So by the end of the jihad, well, nobody trusted you anymore. The organization also caused the biggest loss of life since the first succession war. People also were now pretty sure and uh, understood that you were the cause for the second, third, and partially the fourth succession war, especially how bad some of those got. And uh, you were also the cause for the clans actually doing as much damage as they did when they came in during the Operation Revival period. So you were absolutely aided by everyone and only kept around because you were the one running the HPG network and the HPG network was literally your only source of profit from that point onwards. The C-bill value cratered. And uh, house bills were now the standard currency. As long as you were in a uh, house space, well, you used the house bills. You didn't pay anything in C bills anymore. You had that was your only thing really running. You had those HPGs going. And on the 7th of August, 3132, 80% of the HPG network fell, while a little bit of them were due to uh, physical intervention, let's say. Most of it was simply because. I don't know if it's a human failure. I don't know if it's software issues. I don't know if it's a malfeasance. But really, the entire HPG network crashed. You're out of luck. You're out of money. And you're out of trust. Comstar just died at that point. While there are still Blakists out there and there's Comstar remnants floating around, they're mainly small things. And without a massive revenue source or major support, Nobody is going to really be threatened by them except for very local situations like uh, Ian Kittery, from what I've heard, or the organization called the White Ant. One thing Comstar could have done maybe was uh, still build battle mechs, things like the Celestials that we've been talking about. But with the annihilation of Gibson, with all of their facilities that could build equipment for maybe staying in business, it is kind of gone. So... What's left of Comstar is those remnants and uh, some dreams that some people still have that uh, maybe one day the word of Blake uh, will take hold. I have very little uh, confidence in that. So let's get into the Deva. It's on the bigger side of the heavies at 70 ton. It's not the biggest one you can have, not the smallest. It's not right in the middle, but it works. And it's built around a 280 fusion engine, and it's a light, so it does take up some room in the sides, but not as much as an XL, which is a nice trade-off. You get a top speed of 64 kilometers per hour, which is the equivalent of other 70-ton mechs in that range, like a Warhammer or an Archer. It's built around an heavy-duty gyro, which is strictly worse than armoring the component on the inside. Never use heavy-duty gyros. They just don't work right. Honestly, if you want to do something fancy with a gyro like that, use a compact gyro and then armor it. It's going to be uh, well protected, small enough that you're going to have extra room in that center door for so for more things, possibly padding both the engine and the gyro. That's the engineer talking here. 11 double heat sinks keep the assembly cool and all integrated in the engine. And you get 13 and a half tons of standard plates on an endo steel chassis. So you do save a little bit on the weight. The plating is very good. 13 and a half tons is quite reasonable on a mech that size. You have yet built in C3i computers to round things up, giving you about 29 and a half tons of pod space for equipment, which is under 50% on a mech that size. Even if you add the C3i computer, maybe not the best. As with some of the previous one, we'll go in order of the ones I like the most, and we'll start with the Infernus configuration, which goes pretty hard with a pair of ERPPC, one in each arm, mimicking, let's say, the Warhammer or the Marauder. At closer range, you get a pair of medium pulse lasers for high accuracy fire, and everything is tied to a targeting computer to make sure you have better accuracy with all your weapons. 
to stay cool, you get an extra five double eat sinks, which allows you to uh, soak a decent amount. Shooting those PPCs and running around shouldn't run you very odd. In my opinion, you should probably swap those medium pulse lasers for four standard mediums, maybe ER mediums if you're uh, wanting to run a little bit odd, or, you know, a pair of mediums and a pair of small pulse lasers, and, you know, actually go full Warhammer on the design. But that's really uh, up to you, as it's an Omnimech. The Communist Configuration is a close-range mech hunter with four jump jets to be able to get into position and jump 120 meters to get there. Of course, you're not the fastest thing around still, but once you do get in range, you get a massive 20 class ultra auto cannon with three tons of case protected ammo to make sure people regret it. As backups, you have three ER medium lasers and a very supportive ER small laser, allowing you to stay in the fight once you've uh, wasted all the ammo. Of course, there might not be much of your enemies left once you're done, but there you go. As extra equipment, you also get two extra double eat sinks, which might be useful with an ultra auto cannon of that caliber, and a Guardian ECM to protect your own C3I network. Your usual Eminus configuration is built around a Thunderbolt launcher, D15 class in this case, which is probably my favorite launcher in the Thunderbolt series. Pretty much like I'm the biggest fan of the 15 class LRMs as well. 15 is just such a nice round number, I guess. I'm not sure. And you get eight missiles with a, a case bin to uh, support it. It's not a whole lot if you look at, the, let's say, a Gauss rifle that would be one ton of ammo. But the Gauss rifle itself, the gun itself is bigger and you get more ammo per ton. It's a balancing act once you start looking into it. Across the body, you get four light PPCs that are spread all over in order to increase your protection if you start losing bits in the fight. The right torso also has two ER medium lasers, which I would probably have put in the right arm to ensure you have an even distribution of firepower. Two double eat sinks help you keep cool. If you shoot all four of those uh, light PPCs and run around, you're going to be good with that amount of eat sinks. Of course, if you start shooting everything, well, you're going to run hot. The Luminos D configuration starts with five extra double eat sinks to uh, make sure you're going to run uh, okay, cool. Not two, but enough. You get four jump jets to get into position as well to be able to fire your very big heavy PPC. Once the enemy gets closer, you get two uh, ER medium lasers to help out. And once things get really, really close, you can dissect your enemies with four medium pulse lasers. To protect the rear of the mech, of course, pilots are going to flip them forward, but I'm going to say that it's there to protect your back. You have an ER medium laser and an ER small laser as well. So what is your primary configuration on the Diva? Well, the Invictus configuration starts with that retractable blade, which they all have. And on the other arm, you have a Gauss rifle that only has one ton of ammo. So that's uh, not a whole lot, and you're going to have to make every shot count. You get three light PPCs spread throughout the body to uh, keep the pressure on once you're out of ammo. But really, take out that retractable blade, add up some more ammo for the Gauss rifle, maybe add some ER medium lasers or something along those lines, and it's probably going to be a better setup. The Dominus slash Alpha configuration is also pretty nice, and you start again with a targeting computer to make sure your direct fire weapons are going to hit. Case in point, you get a Rotary AC-5 with three tons of reloads, which is not going to last you all that long if you fire at full rate all the time, but still. And you get a light PPC for medium range firing. Those two weapons have pretty much the same range bracket. I think the light PPC actually is a little bit further than the Rotary AC-5, so uh, it's a useful thing. Once things get a little bit closer, you get two ER medium lasers and that uh, moral support ER small laser. Rounding things up, on the other arm, you have an MML-7 with two tons of reload, which you can use as either SRM, LRM, or a mix of the two. The Scuba Steve edition of the Deva is uh, meant for underwater combat, obviously with four UMU to allow you to jet around. For weapons, it's pretty simple. You get a pair of LRM-15, well, LRT-15, torpedo launchers in one arm and three ER mediums in the other. You also get that nice moral support ER small laser that a lot of configurations seem to have. 
This actually is a pretty decent configuration, even outside of water. Replace the UMUs with jump jets and the torpedo racks with actual LRMs, and you have a somewhat efficient Archer clone, let's say. Take out the jump jets altogether, put Artemis on the uh, missile racks and an extra medium laser. Well, you have a, a, an Archer with a little bit less firepower and uh, looks really fancy. I do think it's an efficient design in the end. The Kylistus version is always your weird experimental design, and this one starts with a supercharger on the engine, giving you speeds of up to 86 kilometers per hour in short periods. You get a laser anti-missile system as well. The DOs are getting more popular. They do generate a whole lot of heat, but since they don't have any ammo, you can keep using them for extended period of time compared to regular anti-missile systems. It's a bit of a trade-off. All the other weapons are tied to a targeting computer, and uh, what you get is two binary lasers, which are probably some of the most terrible weapon out there. Try to look around for some clan large pulse lasers, maybe, or something along those lines. It's going to be better than those binary lasers. J just put PPCs on and call it a day. And you get a ER small laser, as usual. Uh, it brings everything together like a very nice rug. Aculus St. John's is an odd individual with an odd life history, and he's probably not even the weirdest one in the word of Blake, but still. He's a former Solar 7 racer. He joined the Manny Domini, uh, where his already cybernetic heavy body was improved even more. Most of those cybernetics having come from the various accidents he had in his life. He really hated corruption and uh, things that uh, were not what they meant to be, so I really wonder how that guy felt about the jihad later on what he did have though is his own custom saint john's deva version and like many of those uh, custom versions that we've discussed they start with variable speed pulse lasers a pair of large ones in this case for maximum damage and accuracy i probably would put those ahead of binary lasers as well Got another pair of ER medium lasers to give the design some more close range punch. We had a targeting computer giving you very good precision on, well, all of that. You get three extra heat sinks to try to keep you cool and a supercharger to make sure you can get into that fight with those uh, medium range weapon and short range weapons since it's uh, not built for sniping or uh, getting into uh, really nasty fights. You want to start building your own Deva? Well, follow some of my instructions here. Replace that heavy duty gyro with an armored one or a compact armored one. Probably be a better deal. Take out that C3I and put it in a normal cockpit as well. It's probably going to be smarter and easier for regular pi people to pilot, unless you can get one of those new Andon Trottle and Stick cockpits that the C Fox and the Jade Falcons have been building. But that's, uh, uh, that's a secondary thing. This is not a really bad mech in its own rights, and with a few upgrades or a few changes, a lot of organization might be able to rebuild the Deva for their own needs. And as an Omni mech, well, you can do all sorts of things with it. As far as the Celestial go, this one's pretty much middle of the line, and the configurations work pretty well, or can be altered fairly quickly to give you a little bit more punch or a little bit more reliability. So I don't think uh, any of those are really out of line. So I thank you very much for listening to me for so long. I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.